He went on to run the famous Scripps Institution. By the comments of Dr. William Nuremberg, director of the institution. Where he built up the Climate Research Division. And he was a Jason. No one could question Nuremberg's scientific credentials or his academic integrity. It was a fine choice by the president. And Nuremberg had one other asset. Like Reagan, he was a fervent believer in the free market. Nuremberg called in lots of experts, did his research, and produced a report that, spookily enough, chimed pretty much completely with the president's beliefs. Nuremberg accepted that some warming was likely. But he argued that any warming that came our way would happen slowly, so society would have plenty of time to adapt. Human ingenuity would see us through. There was nothing to fear, and certainly no need to act to reduce emissions of carbon dioxide. It was just what Reagan wanted to hear. Presidential aide reputedly asked a leading climate scientist how long before global warming becomes a major problem. The considered reply, 40 years. The aide quipped, get back to me in 39. Global warming was duly kicked into the long grass. And at this stage, in the early 80s, it was easy to sympathise with Nuremberg's view. Global warming was still just a prediction, and the science was in its infancy. So no one could be sure how big a problem it was going to be. And all around there was evidence from history that a changing climate was really nothing to be frightened of anyway. After all, it's something humans have always had to cope with. You only have to drive out to the edge of the Californian desert to find clear evidence that climate varies naturally. I'm standing on the edge of an ancient waterfall. It might be dry, barren rock now, but thousands of years ago, a roaring torrent of water cascaded its way through here, carving out this massive ravine. But that water has long since gone. It's difficult to imagine what it must have been like when the water was in full flow, but I certainly couldn't have stood here. The normally jagged rock has been smoothed to a polish, and those potholes down here have been churned out by the turbulent water. It's created all these grooves and flutes on the rock sides. This is a fossilised river. But it's not just a geological relic. There's plenty of evidence here to back up Nuremberg's case. I bring my students here, not just to show them the river sculpted rocks, but for something else equally intriguing. The clues are all around, like these small flakes of dark volcanic glass called obsidian that Native Americans use to fashion arrowheads and spear points. An art like this over here, carved into the rock. It looks like a, an elk or deer of some kind. It's all evidence that a large community lived and worked around the river here. In fact, if you stay here long enough, you can just imagine them chipping away under the, the veil of the spray and the roar of the falls. Then the climate must have changed, the river stopped, and the people moved on. It's this process of natural climate change which lay at the heart of Bill Nuremberg's case. Humans have lived with climate change for thousands of years. All that's changed is how we cope, 
the key is adaptation. In the past, when the rains went, so did the people. Today, we can do much better than that. The Hoover Dam was built in the 1930s to tame the mighty Colorado River. If you ever wanted a symbol of what human ingenuity and sheer bloody mindedness can achieve, then this is it. It's just a bit unnerving to think that behind this concrete wall, there's a hundred miles of lake. Lake Mead has helped the Western United States conquer the cycle of drought and flood that used to afflict this desert region. It's a powerful symbol of our ability to ride out climate change. Especially when you realise that today, the lake is in the eighth year of a major drought. As you'd expect, the lake level has dropped. You can see a band of light-coloured rock that's been exposed as the water has fallen. You know, it's only when you get into these narrow canyons that you get a sense of just how far the water's fallen. This light-coloured rock here is what was once covered by the water that stretches up for about a hundred feet. It's like a giant bathtub ring. But so far at least, the Hoover Dam has done its job. Despite the drought, Las Vegas and the other desert cities of the American West are doing just fine. You know, the lake level is always yo-yoing up and down. In the 1980s it reached its highest level. And then, in droughts during the 1950s and 1960s, the level was way down here. But even in those really bad droughts, the lake never ran out of water. For 70 years, Lake Mead has kept the American West supplied with water. For Nuremberg, this was living proof that human ingenuity could overcome the gradual creep of climate change. Modern society, far from being ever more vulnerable to climate change, was actually more robust than it had ever been. So there was no need to fear climate change. It was an optimistic message that resonated with the political times. Nuremberg went on to set up one of the leading think tanks that would fight the whole idea of global warming and help create what became known as the Skeptic Movement. The global warming skeptics argued that the Earth's climate system was simply too vast for humans to change. They claimed that there was still very little evidence humans were causing the climate to warm up. And they suggested that any warming that did happen was likely to be slow and therefore easy to cope with. These ideas have remained central to the global warming debate ever since. But as the 1980s advanced, all three arguments came under sustained scientific attack. What shook the skeptics' argument was some more of those ugly facts. And by the mid-1980s, ugly facts were piling up at an alarming rate. Ugly fact number one would challenge the reassuring notion that climate change would be slow and therefore easy to cope with. It had its origins in one of the coldest and remotest places on Earth. 